Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. During my birthday, my hunky dreamy gifted me this Susan Louise Moyer set of silver black velvet brushes, and I finally got a chance to try them out. Truthfully, I do have experience with this brand as I bought a travel brush from them a while ago and I'm still kinda not sure if I like it that much, but I also don't use it that often. This set comes with three round brushes in size 4, 8, and 12. The wooden handles are roughly 6 to 7 inches long with a nice bulge where your hand would grip them. They feel fine in your hand and are not noticeably heavy or cheap and light. If anything, the hand feel of the brushes is sort of forgettable, and that actually kinda makes it comfortable and comforting to use. Like I do for most new materials, I'll be using a doodle finder to give these brushes a thorough testing. If you don't know what a doodle finder is, I'll throw a link in the iCard to my video about them. I'll also be using the Strathmore watercolor journal, which I've used before and feel like I could best describe as being fine given that it's only $9. It's not the best paper and I've definitely found that there are multiple sheets in the book that haven't been sized at all, but that shouldn't matter for testing out the mark making abilities of a brush. The paint palette I'll be using is the Holbein one that I set up in one of my travel palette videos, and links to all the materials used will be in the doobly-doo down below. Now, more about the silver black velvet brushes. These brushes are made in New Jersey from a blend of squirrel hair and black synthetic hair. The reasoning behind the blend of fibers is so that the squirrel hair acts like a mop brush and absorbs a lot of liquid, but the synthetic hair helps the brush maintain a firmness and durability that the squirrel hair alone would not be able to. I'm going to tell you right now, if this brush is made with synthetic bristles specifically to reinforce the strength and stiffness of these brushes, then I cannot imagine what they'd be like without that addition because these are absolutely the softest and most absorbent brushes I've ever used. Every single brush, even the large 12, can make impressively fine lines if you're extra careful about how much pigment you load onto the brush. I prefer a really firm brush that gives me a lot of control, so there was a bit of a learning curve when it came to figuring out how much water versus how much pigment I needed in my mixes, because every single time I dipped this brush into any liquid, it soaked up way more than I was expecting, and usually released it more quickly than I knew how to handle. Even with a really dry mixture, the number 12 brush would absolutely be able to fill an entire page in this journal with just one dip into a wash. Like I said, they hold a lot of liquid. Preferred brush style aside, let's talk about the quality of these brushes. Not a single hair came out of the ferrule, and I think that's also important to mention that despite the fact these were ordered sight unseen online, they arrived with no bent hairs out of place, no bend to the packet, and the protective caps were still secured around the bristles. I've ordered multiple brushes online from Amazon, from professional brush maker websites, and from CheapJoes.com, and many of them have had really frustrating flaws upon arrival. The packaging for these silver black velvet brushes was basic, but super effective, and I appreciated that. You may have noticed that the theme of these are simple but effective holds true throughout the description of the brush, and I think that's my overall summary of them. However, it is worth mentioning that when they were purchased for me, the entire set cost roughly $30 US, which means that each brush is about $10 a piece. If you've ever bought professional paintbrushes before, you know that's an absolute steal. So, if you like really juicy brushes, or want to find out if you're the kind of person who likes really juicy brushes, this is hands down worth the investment. Even if you find it a bit difficult to work with the larger ones in small detailed areas, you could always use them as a mop or wash brush just fine. The small number four brush helps pick up that slack and I made sure to experiment with textures in the nose and fur of that dog behind the lick -a tongue and it definitely was up to the task of tiny little strokes. Have you tried any of the silver black velvet brushes before? What was your experience like? And if there are any brushes you're curious about, let me know. I'm always interested in new tools. Thanks so much for watching. If you're a fan of really stretched out Pokemon and a creepy hidden grimace, please remember to like and subscribe. Until I see you again, I wish you peace, love, and squirrels. Bye.